In this video, we take our first look at the conservation of mechanical energy. We start with a system of objects. We could have more than one. Next, we sum all the kinetic energies and the potential energies of all the objects. That total sum is called the mechanical energy. Now, if no net work is done by any non-conservative forces, then that amount of mechanical energy is constant. In that case, we say it's conserved, meaning unchanging. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to look at a person throwing a ball up in the air. At the moment that it leaves their hand, now of course not before, while the person is throwing it, if it's still in contact with the hand, the hand is a non-conservative force that is doing net work on the ball. If my system's the ball, I have to wait until it immediately leaves the person's hand. Well, at that moment, there's some velocity up, and I'm going to establish a coordinate system with the origin at that position and positive x up. I'm also going to establish the zero of my potential energy at x is equal to zero, the location where the ball is at this instant. In that case, there is no potential energy, and all of the energy is kinetic. After the ball goes up a little bit, it has slowed down, so it has less kinetic energy. It's at a different location now, so it has some potential energy, and the exact amount of kinetic energy it lost is now the exact amount of potential energy it's gained. Now, at the top, it comes to rest, which means its kinetic energy is zero, and now all of the energy is potential. And the amount of potential energy it has now is exactly the same amount of kinetic energy it had at the beginning. On the way back down, when it comes to that same location again, the split between kinetic and potential energy is the same. And then finally, right before it hits the person's hand, not after it does, but right before, it has the same speed it had before going in the other direction, which means it has the same kinetic energy it had at the beginning and zero potential energy. I think it's useful to have this picture in your head of some finite amount of stuff that oscillates back and forth between kinetic and potential energy, where the amount of stuff in this energy doesn't change, just its distribution between the two types. Let's put in some numbers. So I've said that the mass is a half a kilogram and the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared, so I can do some of the calculations in my head. At this first instant of time, given our coordinate system, the position is zero, and I'm going to say the speed is 10 meters per second. At the top of the trajectory, the velocity, of course, is equal to zero, and we can find how high it went using this kinematic expression, where v final is zero. I can solve for delta x, where the initial x is zero, and it's the initial velocity squared over twice the acceleration. 10 squared is 100 divided by 20 is five, meters. Now you can ask, well, can't I use conservation of energy to find that? And yes, but I want to be able to see that. I'm going to use kinematics, which hopefully we believe is right, to be able to demonstrate to ourselves that energy is conserved. If I look halfway to the top, then x is equal to 2.5 meters, and I can again use kinematics to find the velocity. Using the same expression, v initial is 10 squared, and at this point, we have 2 times negative 10 is the acceleration times 2.5 meters. I get 100 minus 50, or v final is a square root of 50, which is about 7.07. .07. Then, of course, on the way back down, the position and speeds are the same. The velocity is just going in the opposite direction. So let's do some calculations. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and given this coordinate system, and given the fact that I established the zero of my potential energy at x is equal to zero, then the potential energy is just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the position. The position is zero, so the potential energy is zero, and 10 squared is 100, the mass is one half, so that's 50 times another one half is 25, and the units in energy here is joules. What happens halfway up? Well, at halfway up, I have mass times 1 half times the speed squared. Now remember, that was a square root of 50, so that squared is 50 divided by 4 is 12.5. And the position, I have the mass, which is 1 half, 
times the acceleration due to gravity times 2.5, which is 5 halves, is again 50 divided by 4, which is 12.5. So the energy is equal and half the kinetic energy at the beginning. Now at the top, the velocity is equal to 0, and so the kinetic energy is 0. The potential energy is the mass, which is 1 half, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10, which is 5, times the position, which is 5, which is 25 joules. So the potential energy at the very top is the same energy as the kinetic energy in the beginning. Now, of course, on the way back down, you get the same numbers. I think it's a good idea to have this vision in your head, to be able to visualize what's happening with the conservation of energy. There's a finite amount of stuff, this energy, and it oscillates back and forth between kinetic and potential, sometimes all one, sometimes all the other, sometimes a mix, but that total amount of stuff is constant, is conserved, as long as there's no net work done by non-conservative forces. Now, to use this to solve problems, we would choose two points in time, add up all the energies in those two points in time, and that mechanical energy has to be the same.